Hey Derek Gids, Mr. Hudsfield here. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Opera House game today, which is probably the most famous chess game uh, that a lot of uh, students look at. Um, just a, just an overall great game. It was played in 1858 by a guy named Paul Morphy, uh, and he actually had two opponents he was playing against, uh, the Duke of Brunswick and Count Izzord. So uh, Paul Morphy was an American player born in New Orleans, uh, a fantastic player, uh, basically a chess prodigy growing up. Uh, he was crushing everyone in America. He decided to go over to Europe and play some European people. Uh, he, he was crushing it over there. He got invited uh, to go see an opera in Paris by uh, the Duke of Brunswick, uh, who had a box. So he, he took up the invite, and during this uh, opera, uh, Paul Morphy is trying to watch the opera, and uh, these two guys challenge him to a uh, chess match. And so I like to think that Paul Morphy was just trying to chill and watch a show, and these guys are uh, playing really intensely, and Paul Morphy just destroys them. So it's a great instructional game, so let's uh, take a look at it. I know we looked at it in class but uh, it'll be a good refresher. So here we go. So Paul Morphy is playing the white pieces here, and the Duke of Brunswick and Count Izzord are playing black. So Paul Morphy opens up with e4, pretty standard, and the Count and the Duke respond with e5. Uh, Paul Morphy develops his uh, knight, looking to attack there. Uh, pretty standard. And then the Count and the Duke, and this is called the Philidor's Defense. It was very popular uh, at the time. Uh, pretty standard. Uh, Mr. Morphy develops, creating some tension here in the middle. Uh, and then the Count and the Duke use this move, uh, which is attempting to pin the knight, because uh, if he was to move, the queen would get gobbled up. Um, not Probably not the best move, we don't think anymore. Uh, so if we were to take here with the pawn, uh, they could take back. And this isn't looking very good for black. Um, so right now, black loses their chance to castle, and then white could grab this pawn, threatening here, and also threatening here. Uh, so they probably have to retreat their their bishop to, to block that attack. But that's not what the, uh, the duke and the count did. So instead of uh, allowing that to happen, uh, they, they took right here on f3, um, just to avoid that. And so Mr. Morphy recapture with his queen. Um, and then the Duke and the Count recapture that pawn. So, so far we're looking, you know, pretty, pretty decent. Um, nothing too crazy going on right now. Uh, Mr. Morphy develops his bishop. So this is pretty threatening right here. Eyeballing the F7 square. Uh, if, if they're not careful and they make a silly move, then that would be a checkmate game over. But... The Count and the Duke, they were decent players, so they, they saw that threat coming. Uh, so they blocked that by developing their knight. Um, just so now we can't we can't capture there. <clears throat> and then Mr. Morphy makes this move. So pretty threatening here. We have a nice battery, it's called, when you have two pieces lined up ready to do damage. Uh, and so this bishop's looking to capture on f7. The queen is looking over here on b7. So... A lot of uh, a lot of threats going on right now, so the count and the duke need to respond to that. Uh, so they move their queen to e7, uh, protecting here. Now this pawn on b7 is still pretty weak, so Mr. Morphy could go and just gobble that up. Um, it looks like a free pawn, and kind of is, uh, but the count and the duke could respond with this, so kind of eliminating this this threat here and so we would just trade queens and pretty pretty tight game still but that's not what happened uh <clears throat> after the count and the duke developed their their not uh, bleh, developed their queen here paul morphy made just kind of like a pretty chill waiting move he developed his knight to uh, c3 so he got that ready just kind of and he's also protecting his pawn here that was under attack um by the count and the duke and they decide, the Count and the Duke decided to protect their pawn by moving the, the C pawn forward. So it looks like they have all their bases covered. Queen's, you know, protecting the pieces that were being threatened. Uh, and Paul Morphy comes out with this move. So he develops his bishop. He is pinning this knight to the queen. So this, this knight can't really do much anymore. He's pretty stuck. 
Uh, so that stinks for that that night right there. The count and the duke do this. They they say, hey, let's let's just attack this bishop, get him to retreat, and Paul Morphy does a pretty cool move right here that I would not have done. I probably would have just you know retreated my bishop and save him, but Paul Morphy makes a sacrifice. Um, sacrificing is tough for beginning players, myself included, because you don't always know when you should be sacrificing and when you shouldn't. But Paul Morphy's a genius. So we'll just go with what he does. Uh, he takes with his his knight. Crazy. So he, he's given up his knight uh, in exchange for two pawns. So he, he technically went down a point there, but he still has a good position. And so he's sacrificing because uh, he has a game plan. He knows what he's doing. He knows his goals, and uh, he can see a couple moves ahead. So uh, he takes with check, and the duke and the count develop their uh, knight uh, block in there, and and now this is they kind of put themselves into a pin. Uh, uh, so this this knight can't move anymore if it wants to, because uh, this is an absolute pin, meaning there's no way for this knight to move anymore. He's stuck. So uh, whenever you have a piece in a pin, it's always good just to drill into that piece and put extra extra pressure on there. Uh, don't let up if you have a pin. <clears throat> And right now we have two pins going on by Mr. Morphy. One is a relative pin attacking uh, the queen if uh, this knight was to move. And an absolute pin on uh, this knight over here. So not looking too good. And then Mr. Morphy really just piles on to that pin by castling queenside. So he could have just, you know, developed his, his rook right here and been putting extra pressure. Ah, but that's how he did. He castled queenside. Now his king is safe. Uh, he gets his rook into the action, putting more pressure on the knight on d7. So anytime in chess, if you can make a move that does more than one thing, has more than one purpose, that's the best. Because a lot of the time, uh, chess has a lot to do with tempo. So how much time you're spending doing different things. So right now you see Paul Morphy has his miners out. He's castled. All the pieces are in the game. And if you look at the Duke and uh, the Count, this piece is useless. It can't go anywhere. This piece hasn't moved. This piece hasn't moved. Both of these pieces are pinned. Uh, and then the Queen's just kind of sitting there. So his pieces aren't really doing much for him. Um, so here we go. Uh, the Count and the Duke respond by trying to protect this piece that is double attacked. Okay. And Paul Morphy just takes with his rook. Uh, so he's kind of trading a rook for a minor piece, which we call being down the exchange. Uh, so it seems to us that it's not the best exchange, but for Paul Morphy, he knows what he's doing. Uh, so the Count and the Duke recapture. We still have this pressure here. We still have this pressure here. And then Paul Morphy's going to get his rook into the game and just slide it on over uh, and filling that that space so still having lots of pressure and this rook cannot take because ah if he was to move he'd be in check so that's illegal so this this rook is stuck can't do anything he's just kind of waiting to get captured uh so the duke and the <clears throat> count move their queen they're trying to get their queen out of this pin now this uh knight can protect um and paul morphy does some really cool kind of sacrifices here so he captures with his bishop, he's in check. It's a fork right here. Um, and the duke and the count recapture. So, I mean, do you see what Paul Morphy's trying to do right now? This next move, I think, is, is just beautiful. Uh, not something beginning players like to do is sacrificing the queen. Um, so Paul Morphy puts his queen on b8, putting the king into check. The king has no safe squares to go, uh, so the only move is for the duke and the count to recapture. And right now, it looks like uh, black is dominating. They have all these pieces, and all Paul Morphy has is his bishop and his rook. But that's really all he needs to win the game, because he moves rook to d8. Uh, checkmate. Beautiful. Um, one of the most famous chess games. Uh, a lot to learn from this game. Uh, it's important to get your pieces out, rapid development, um, knowing when to sacrifice, which is very difficult, especially for beginning players. 
but just a beautifully played game. Awesome sacrifices. Uh, just very well played. So I hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, definitely keep studying, keep playing, and keep getting better. Okay, Swindlers, have a great night. I'll see you all later.